everybody, thank you so so much for tuning in. Today's video is a blast from the past because I am making a cube organizer. Now it's been two years since I've made a cube organizer on this channel and it is such a bittersweet video to make because if you've been with me for a long time, you know that that was the very first video that ever took off on this channel. I ended up on Creator on the Rise. So many great things happened because of that cube shelf video, and I am so grateful for it. So to see them back at Dollar Tree, well, the new ones at Dollar Tree, I got really excited and I can't wait to show you my updated version. And I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel because once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Please go ahead and hit that notification bell, set them to all so you know every time I post a video. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm starting off with these crates. Now you can find these at Walmart as well, but now they're available at Dollar Tree. They are totally different than the purple ones that Dollar Tree had before. I just wanted to show you the difference. The old ones were a harder plastic and were a little sturdier. These are a much softer plastic and I wanted to show you the difference in case you're planning on recreating that bench I made or anything that requires you putting something expensive like a camera in it. You might not wanna do that with the new crates, but definitely for something like a kid's shoe organizer, these are good to go or what I'm creating today. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the stickers from all of my crates. And I used six in total. So these have these little holes right here which make it really easy to align. So that's a pro for these crates. And I'm gonna use my E6000. I am gonna leave the link below for that key. Just makes it really easy to use. And for these crates, you're not gonna use as much E6000 as the old ones because you're just going to put them inside the little holes. For the first crate, I went ahead and put E6000 in all of the holes, and then I realized that I probably should just put them into the larger hole of each crate. That way the glue surrounds the smaller one and they attach. But you could go ahead and add glue to all of the holes if you feel more comfortable. I was just trying to save a little bit of glue because in my last tutorial with the old crates, you would literally have to use an entire tube of E6000 since there were so many openings. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in all my old tutorials, which is use zip ties to secure them. And I'm gonna push the zip tie all the way back so that they're not visible. And then with a set of pliers, side cutters, whatever you have, just cut off the excess. So I went ahead and added my third one using the same method, which is just adding glue to the bigger holes of each crate and zip tying it. So once I do that, I'm going to add my second row because I did do two rows of three. Now, if I were to do this again, I would probably assemble the rows separately and then stack them. But as you can see right here, I am assembling it on top. And it was a little bit more difficult because you do have to move it around. So like I said, if I were to do this again, I'd probably assemble separately and then stack. Once you have that second row in place, make sure that you're zip tying both the bottom and the sides so that you can pick this up and move it around and not have it basically fall apart. So just go ahead, zip tie everything in place, make sure that they're not visible. And if they are, that's totally okay. Once you spray paint this, this won't look like zip ties. Now it's time to spray paint and I went ahead and used Rust-Oleum's Oil Rubbed Bronze. This isn't even a complete can. This is a can I had left over from a previous tutorial, and I'm also using that spray paint handle. You can find this anywhere. I have it linked below, but you can find it at Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, any hardware store. It is super duper beneficial because it gives you a nice even coat and your finger doesn't cramp up. So for bigger projects, this is awesome. I'm gonna make sure that this dries really well 24 hours because this is plastic and I forgot to mention I did lightly sand this so that the spray paint can stick. So now I'm going to figure out what part I want to be the bottom and I'm going to flip it over and on those top pieces I wanted to make this look really different so I added little wooden dowels. I found this at Walmart. It brings four of each size. It has a smaller one and a bigger size. And because some of the holes are bigger than others, this did make it a little tricky because some of them fit perfectly and some of them didn't and it just went straight through because they do have holes at the bottom. So you can either put it like this or you can use the smaller one which just sits on top of the hole. 
Now, if I were to do this again, I'd probably put some washers underneath just to cover up that hole and give it a little bit more security, but we live and we learn. So I added some E6000 around and then just placed it on top. And like I said, if you have anything to cover that hole, that would probably make it a little bit more secure. So whether it's a washer, heck, even a penny would make this a lot more secure, even though it did end up drying nicely. I went ahead and added it to the other side, and because that one had a bigger hole, it was a lot easier to stay in place. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for 24 hours, but I'm gonna work on the top of the crate. So for that, I'm gonna use cutting boards. I was able to find three more, but if you can't find them, you can use these puzzles, which are made of wood, and cut it down if you have a way to. You can use the canvases, remove the canvas part, and just add popsicle sticks, or you can just have wood cut down. I'm gonna take the cutting board, sand it down because I wanted it to match the other wood that I'm gonna be using. And once it's sanded down, you can definitely see the difference in color. I am not going to glue this down to my crate, but if you want to, you can go ahead and add glue to the little holes and then place it on top. I honestly just placed it on top because if I do change my mind and I do want to go ahead and purchase wood the length of this crate, then I want that option without tearing down my entire crate. By the way, my crate is still upside down, letting the feet dry. And while it's upside down, I decided to add utility hinges. This I got for 97 cents at Walmart, and you want this part facing you and this part going into the crate. So you want it to open all the way and then stop right there so the doors have a place to stop. And when you have these in your hand, you're definitely going to see what I'm talking about. So you're gonna place it where you want, and then with some painter's tape, you're gonna secure it in place. And what I like to do is add a little bit of baby oil so that in case it seeps on there, it doesn't close it shut. The beauty of working with E6000 is that you can move everything around and you still have enough dry time to play with it. So these are too close. I did end up removing the tape and sliding them to the side. And after doing that, I realized that I really didn't even want my doors on that row. So after I had completed that entire row, I removed all of them and then placed them up top. I wanted my doors on that bottom row. Remember, this is still upside down because I'm letting the little dowel rods dry. And remember, this should be facing up because I want my doors to open in the other direction. So for the bottom, since I do have glue from where I had originally stuck my hinges, I'm just going to sand it down, wipe it down, and re-spray paint. I didn't have a clear vision on what I wanted this to look like, so it's trial and error. For the doors, I'm going to use these craft sticks that I found at Walmart. And if you can't find that, Walmart will gladly give you some of their paint stir sticks. These are the smaller ones, and if you want the really big ones, they're 97 cents and they bring pretty large ones. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the popsicle sticks. I lined two up on the side and then made my markings on when I wanted to cut them down. This is really easy by just taking your pen and gliding it against the sides. So I did one on each side because I wanted it at the doors to look like little crates. Then I went ahead and did the horizontal row, doing the same thing, gliding my Sharpie across the edge. And I believe I made five of these. And then once they were done, I cut them down. Now cutting them down is super simple. You can use a mini saw like the one that I've been using and I'll link that below, or you can just use scissors. The heavy duty scissors are what work for this. Do not try using little craft scissors. They won't do it. So I'm doing my two vertical pieces first and sanding it down since that's what's going to be visible. And then I'm doing my other pieces. To attach them and have them look straight, I'm starting with my vertical piece and adding my longer horizontal pieces to the top and bottom, flipping that over and making a little box, and then adding my other pieces so that it's nice and even. So I did this three times because I made three doors. And I lined them up next to each other so that the spacing is kind of the same. And with a stencil, I decided to add some detail. So I just added some numbers. Now, if you're painting them on, you can go ahead and use painter's tape to cover up the rest of the letters so they don't bleed. But I went ahead and used my Sharpie because why not? It dries a whole lot quicker and it has the same effect. So I just traced out my number, added a little decimal, and this I found on Amazon. They are super lightweight and I think adds to this whole look. 
it looks so cute and I'll link it below but you can use whatever you want as a handle now I'm going to attach it using my e6000 just going to add a generous amount but not too much so it doesn't seep out of the sides and I'm going to try and place it as centered as possible once the door is completely dry it's time to attach Everything on my crate is completely dry as well. I'm not doing this while this is wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add glue to this, my E6000. Make sure that it is not seeping onto the part of the hinges that open and close. Even though it does have baby oil, you can still close this shut. So now I'm gonna align my door and place it on there. Now, be very, very careful with this. Try and get it as straight as possible. And you can also add some weight to this so that you're making sure that it is touching the hinges. Once it was completely dry, you can go ahead and open and close your little doors. You can also just make crates if you don't want to do little doors and make your life a little less complicated. So I flipped it over onto its right side, added my bamboo, and when I was done, I had this really cool and unique farmhouse organizer. I think it looks really great, a really good upgrade and it's just so darn cute. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Make sure that you check out my other crate tutorials. They'll be linked in the end. And as usual, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so much, and hopefully I will see you on the next one.